Hi, I'm Andrew Caskey. I'm Managing Director of Nicholson & Company Organ Builders. We're based down in Malvern in Worcestershire and we're working here in St Michael the Belfry Church to dismantle the pipe organ here um, for complete restoration and eventual relocation into another church in York. Dismantling of this organ and restoration is a major task, as you might imagine. Dismantling is underway at the moment. It's going to take about three weeks. And it's, it's a bit like undoing a giant 3D jigsaw puzzle. Everything has to be labelled and uh, first of all we have to work out how to get it apart because sometimes these organs weren't built for disassembly. But once we've got it all apart, we'll take it all down to Malvern and everything will be restored to tip-top condition. This instrument was built in 1885 by probably York's most um, famous organ builder, William Denman, with his son John. And this was the largest organ that they built from scratch. It's unfortunately been silent for the last 25 years or so, but um, uh, we're very excited to hear the sounds that it's going to make in its new home in St Lawrence's Church here in the city. So as Andrew was saying in his talk, the organ sound is made up of different families. Um, there are metal pipes and wooden pipes. Um, between those there are flues and reeds. Now this is a flue pipe. Um, it works by when the player presses a key, it opens a valve in the soundboard that lets wind in through the toe here um, and speaks through the mouth and this, the uh, sound is produced by the shape and size and also the type of metal that the, the pipe is. This is one of the diapasons and it sounds a little bit like that. The, the sound is dictated by the, the proportions of the pipe. Generally the thinner and longer they are, the more stringy in tone. And this is one of the pedal reeds and actually sits in, sits in a boot like this and it has a resonator that sits in here on the top. Now this whole thing creates the sound. The sound is affected by the shape and size of the resonator but also by the reed. Now the wind comes in through the boot like this and um, causes this brass tongue to vibrate and that, it, that creates the tone and the tuning is affected by this spring that can move up and down just like a, a ruler on a table. So this is a pedal trombone um, so it's one of the one of the kind of more prominent and lowest uh, lowest sounds in the organ. One of the things we've got to think about though is that this organ as well as needing restored was altered at various times in its life, in the 1920s and then quite significantly in the 1970s. And there's a big question mark as to, do we restore it as is, or do we change it further, or do we put it back? And we certainly at Nicholson's feel that an organ is best um, when it has a single overall artistic concept. And so we wanted to return this organ exactly as its builder left it and meant it to sound. And so that means that as well as restoring things to good condition, we also have to undo some of the alterations that have been made um, over the years. That's going to involve making some new pipework as replicas of surviving Denman pipework elsewhere, and also making some mechanical changes to put things back as they should have been. So, fantastic project and we're very much looking forward to hearing it in its new home in St Lawrence's uh, in 2020, but there's a lot of work to do between now and then.